What's going on guys? Love Smash, back with an all new video for you guys today, and in today's video, I'm finally getting the chance to do my top 10 character picks for Street Fighter V. And ever since we got the announcement for the game, I've been wanting to do this video, so I'm finally happy to get it out for you guys today. But besides talking about my top 10 picks, I also want to talk about some other stuff regarding graphics, roster size rumors, character rumors, story speculation, and much, much more. So let's start it off by talking about graphics. And they have gone with the Unreal 4 engine for this game. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the graphics so far. The one on the left was taken from the first reveal trailer. The one on the right was taken from Charlie's reveal trailer. And as you can see, there is a big difference here. Much, much brighter, more colorful, vibrant colors, very sleek. They definitely have stepped it up here. Very, very nice. And you'll see this with many, many fighting games. They will always tweak the graphics here and there. And it will look very different by the time the game actually comes out. So with graphics out of the way, let's talk about roster size. And Yoshinori Ono, who is the producer of the Street Fighter series, has talked about wanting to keep a very small roster for this game. And here is his reasoning. Quote, my first reason is they cost a lot of money to make. And the second reason, which is the main one, is that with so many characters in the game, working on counter strategies and matchups takes so much time that we're in danger of leaving newcomers completely behind. The article also goes on to say that Ono feels that having fewer fighters in a fighting title will accentuate the new character's own attributes more and give them a higher chance of being played. Plus, less characters makes it easier for newcomers to enter the competitive scene. Now, I went on a couple other people's videos, went on some articles where this was mentioned, and tried to get the fan community's reaction to this. Because there's been a rumor going around that there would only be about 16 characters. But we'll get to that in a second. Now, the fan community seemed to be split. A lot of people are in favor of a smaller roster, because they could focus on balancing and make the game an overall better experience. But of course, for the obvious reason, many people aren't happy about that if it was small, because people want a lot of characters in the game. They don't want to play with a small roster. Now, in a second, I'm going to talk about Street Fighter rosters throughout history. But first, let's talk about this rumor where the 16 character part came about. Now this all came from this guy named Ken Bogard and supposedly what I've been reading, he's the guy who said one of Bison's dolls was gonna be the character in Ultra Street Fighter 4 and then DiCaprio came in and so this guy could have credibility, I'm really not sure. But this is some of the other stuff he stated. Time weather effects and stages, release date 2016 before the end of the fiscal year, Unreal 4 engine, which we know, I said that earlier, Unreal 4 engine and 60 frames per second, 1080p it's running, the new mechanic is called V-Trigger, you can change your stance, 16 characters, no Super Street Fighter 2X plus EX, updates kind of like League of Legends Killer Instinct, the story mode will be way much better, the PC version is here because they want to bring the game to Latin America, South Asia, and Africa. So guys, that's pretty much everything the rumor held. Now we still have very little information to go by when it comes to Street Fighter V, so we don't know just yet if you could just throw this rumor out. But let me know in the comments what you think, whether it's true or not, and I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. Remember, things can change in development, we don't know. Now, I wanted to bring this up as well. Now, in a Famitsu article, the developers for the game mentioned that they are heavily considering input from the community regarding which characters should make a return. That being said, they won't go overboard. Ono expressed a desire to keep the overall selection small in order to reduce production costs and provide an easier entry point for new players. And that is actually true. Capcom has set up a character poll. I'm gonna drop the link in the comments and description if you guys would like to vote. They're letting you pick the top five characters you would like to see in Street Fighter V. So there is some truth to that. Now let's talk about Street Fighter rosters throughout history. And the reason I'm doing this is to give you guys an example of how the rosters have stacked up over the years. Now I'm talking about the initial game in each series, not like Third Strike, not Super Street Fighter 4, not Street Fighter Alpha 3, not Street Fighter 2 Turbo or Champion Edition. I'm talking about Street Fighter 2, 3, 4, and Alpha. In each of those series, the rosters have never been that particularly big. Street Fighter 2 only had a roster of eight characters. Moving on to Street Fighter Alpha, that roster only had 10 characters. And it was the same story for Street Fighter 3. And when we first got Street Fighter 4, when it hit arcades, it only had 17 characters. But when it hit consoles, the number was bumped up to 25. So there never has really been a huge roster in the first game of the series. Now, the reason I brought this up and the point I'm trying to make is whatever the year is, 2017, 2018, right after Street Fighter 5 comes out, I'm very confident that Capcom will do the same thing that they've been doing ever since the early 90s with Street Fighter 2. Will there be at least two more Street Fighter 5s that come out? 
whether they call it Street Fighter V Mega or Street Fighter V Extreme or Gigantic or whatever whatever they want to call it. I'm sure there'll be two more games. They'll add new characters. They'll add more mechanics. They'll add tweaks to balancing and all that other stuff. Just like they've been doing ever since Street Fighter II. There was Hyper Fighting. There was Turbo. There was Champion Edition. There was Street Fighter Alphas 2 and 3. There was Third Strike and Second Impact. There was Super Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4. I'm very confident that will happen again with Street Fighter V. I'm almost like 95% sure that we're going to get two more Street Fighter Vs in the future. Now, with that being said, even if there is a small roster of only 16 characters in the first Street Fighter V, I'm sure we'll see more added over the future in more Street Fighter V games. That's the point I was trying to make. And the last two things I want to mention before I get to my top 10 is the first one, there was a roster rumor going around that stated the full roster was leaked. However, this apparently has been proven fake by someone higher up at Capcom. Do you confirm this? Also, Yoshinori Ono has stated there is not going to be a free-to-play option for Street Fighter V, like Killer Instinct. And the last thing I wanted to bring up, which is pretty important, is the whole story arc of where Street Fighter V is going to fit in. Now, on the left here, you'll see these are when the Street Fighter games initially came out. Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4 series. And then on the right here, this is how the Street Fighter games fit in the story's timeline. It goes as followed. Street Fighter, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 4, and then Street Fighter 3. Now, based on what we've seen from the trailers, the fighting system looks very similar to Street Fighter 3. So this led a lot of people to speculate that Street Fighter 5 could be taking place after the events of Street Fighter 3. However, since we know very little about the game, we don't know if that's true. Other speculation has been it could take place in between Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 3's events. Whichever is true, we don't know yet. We're still waiting on a confirmation from Capcom on where this is going to fit in. So guys, that was pretty much everything I wanted to bring up for the discussion part. Now let's talk about my top 10 character picks. Now for this list, it was pretty hard to do because there are so many great Street Fighter characters, it's really hard to narrow it down to just 10. So for my list, I not only tried to include characters that are well known and popular, I want to include a few characters that have been overlooked for a few years now and also try to include a good balance of characters from Street Fighter 2, 3, 4, and Alpha. Now, of course, you guys may want other characters in, but let me know in the comments what characters you want to see. These are just my 10 picks. Now, let's, first off, we know we got Ryu, Chun-Li, Charlie Returning, and Bison in the game already. And what's interesting about Bison is you'll notice his hair is now white. Does this mean he aged a lot, and that means this is going to take place after Street Fighter 3? Hmm, very interesting, though. Now, for my list, you are not going to see any characters from Street Fighter EX series because they are not owned by Capcom, they are owned by Arika. So even though it would be really awesome to see Skullomania, it seems very unlikely that would happen. And the last thing I will say, which is probably the most important, any character from the original Street Fighter 2, meaning the eight playable characters and the four unplayable bosses, are by far the most iconic and well-known characters in the Street Fighter series. So chances are we will see these characters eventually in Street Fighter 5. Whether we see some of them in Street Fighter 5, or we see them added, like I said, I'm very confident there's going to be at least two more Street Fighter 5s made, they're going to add more characters. I'm sure we'll see most of them, if not all of them, at some point. For example, Ken, he's been the only character in the Street Fighter series besides Ryu to appear as a playable character in every single game. He's like having Sub-Zero and Scorpion in Mortal Kombat, so I'm sure we'll see him eventually revealed. Then you got Blanca, who's Yoshinori Ono's favorite character. He carries around a little Blanca figurine wherever he goes. Then you have fan favorites like Sagat, and then you have Vega. You have Guile, who could play very well into the story mode with Charlie being in the game. That could play for a good story. It's just like pretty much with these characters, it's like we'll see them eventually, so there was no need to put them on the list. So let's talk about my top 10 picks now. I've made you guys wait enough. So without further ado, here we go. And by the way, these are not ranked in any particular order. Number one, Kami. Ever since making her debut in Super Street Fighter 2, Kami instantly became a fan favorite. People love her. In fact, every poll I've seen for Street Fighter 5 for characters people want in for the fan voting, she is always in the top 5 at the very least. So based on her popularity alone, I think she stands a very good shot. And her backstory and the story for Street Fighter V, still there are a lot of question marks with it. I think there's a lot they could do. There's so much potential there to include her in the story. Plus, she's just badass. I mean, who doesn't love Kami? So based on all that alone, I think her chances are very good, and that's why she's the first character on my list. Moving on to my number two pick is Alex, who is the central character of the Street Fighter 3 games and during the current timeline, their current champ, but we haven't seen Alex playable in a Street Fighter game since. We've seen him in Capcom vs. series, but not in a Street Fighter game. Now, no doubt Alex is popular, a lot of people want to see him back, and if the story really is going to take place after the events of Street Fighter 3, I think there's a very good chance we're going to end up seeing Alex. Now, there actually could be a potential hint in Ultra Street Fighter 4. In one of the stages, there is a billboard with Alex's face on it saying, I will be back. Now, is this a hint that he is returning, or is this just an elaborate troll by the development team? 
I have no idea, but I definitely think Alex has a good shot to make a return. Moving on to my number three pick is Akuma. And ever since being introduced in Street Fighter, he's become a staple in the series. He's a fan favorite. People love Akuma. He's one of the most powerful characters in the entire series. And if he wasn't in Street Fighter V, not only would people be extremely shocked, there would probably be riots. That's how much people love him. So I don't think I need to say more on him. I think his chances are pretty much 99% that he'll be in Street Fighter V. Moving on to my number four pick is Jerry. And Jerry is one of the newest characters introduced in the Street Fighter series. She made her debut in Super Street Fighter 4. Now, based on her personality and her design, instantly made her a fan favorite. She's very unique with her Taekwondo style, very cool backstory, and overall a very badass character. Now, she is the new leader of SIN, which could work very well into the story of Street Fighter V, depending on the direction they go. Remember, there are a lot of question marks of where the story is going to take place. But I definitely think Jury would be very cool in Street Fighter V. I think the fans would love to see her back, so that's why she's the fourth pick on my list. Moving on to my fifth pick is a little unorthodox, but Oro. Now, Oro is really strange because you either love him because his design is very weird, or you hate him because his design is very weird. But based on his backstory alone is why I've always been a fan of Oro. Let's see, he's over 100 years old. He's a hermit dude living in a cave trying to master immortality. He's looking for a worthy successor to his fighting style. But the coolest part is he ties one arm behind his back so he doesn't accidentally kill his opponent, and he wants to make it a fair fight. That is by far one of the coolest backstories, and people actually consider Oro to be one of the strongest characters in the entire series. So based on all those reasons alone, I had no choice but to include him on my list. By far one of the coolest characters and most underrated characters in the Street Fighter series. Moving on to pick number six with Ibuki. Now this is where a little bit of my personal bias comes into play, because Ibuki is one of my all-time favorite Street Fighter characters. She's up there with Blanca and Guile in the top three. Always loved her play style, female ninja, really cool moveset, finishers, ninjutsu style. I would love to see her back in Street Fighter V. I know she's got a lot of fans out there as well, so let's hope she makes it on the roster. Now moving on to pick number seven with the man that doesn't even need a full name. All he needs is one letter, and that's right, I'm talking about Q. Now Q has been highly requested for such a long time, going back to Street Fighter 4, now with Street Fighter V, fans really want to see him back. Now his only playable appearance was in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and even then, we still know very little about him. So I think it's the perfect time, bring him back in Street Fighter V, build up his backstory, let us know what he's all about. And Q is really cool because he's so mysterious. He's this tall character in a trench coat or a robotic helmet, and his moves, he's really slow, but his stamina is incredible. He's like this brawler type character. I think it'd be awesome to see Q back, so come on Capcom, give Q a chance. Moving on to pick number eight with Crimson Viper, and she was actually the only new female character to be introduced in the Street Fighter IV series. That is until Jerry came along in Super Street Fighter IV, and without a doubt, probably the most unique character to be introduced in those series of games. She has a fire kicks, electrical punches, and the CIA fighting style. Definitely a unique character, really badass, a cool story to boot, and call it a gut feeling, but I have a feeling we're gonna see her playable in Street Fighter V at some point. And I think there's a lot they could do. Like I said, there are a lot of question marks with the Street Fighter V story, but I'm sure they can put her in somehow, working for the CIA, infiltrating a mission or whatever, but I definitely think we'll see her playable at some point. Now moving on to my number 9 pick is Yurin. Now Yurin is a character first introduced in the Street Fighter 3 series and we haven't seen him since as well. And the reason I think Yurin has a very good shot to be playable in Street Fighter 5 is because it all goes back to Charlie's trailer. Now if you saw the trailer you'll notice on Charlie's head he has the same jewel crested mark on his forehead just like Yurin and Gil had in Street Fighter 3. So it makes me think that somehow Charlie was resurrected by the Illuminati somehow and they're fighting for him. Now I don't know if that's true, like I said this is all merely speculation, but it makes me think that Yurin could potentially be on the way as a playable character as well and play big into the story mode. Whether Gil is coming back, I have no idea. I really don't know. A lot of people seem to dislike Gil, but I have a feeling we're going to see Yurin. I don't know, but the Illuminati seems like it could play a role in the Street Fighter V story. Now, before I give you guys my 10th and final pick, I wanted to give you guys my bonus pick. Now, my bonus pick is Abel. Now, for a number of reasons, a lot of fans have been speculating that Abel could be playable in Street Fighter V, and it all goes back to his backstory. Now, there is very little to be known about him, but something we do know about Abel from the cutscenes of Street Fighter IV is that maybe Charlie played a role in Abel's life. And this goes back to the Street Fighter Wiki page, and I'm going to play you guys the clips in a second. But it states, it is implied that the soldier who cared for Abel was either entrusted with him by Charlie or was Charlie himself. He is only seen in a shadow, possibly a callback to his identity of shadow in Marvel vs. Capcom. However, this soldier's hair is much shorter than Charlie's signature style. According to Guile, the only two men on Earth who can use the Sonic Boom or Flash Kick are himself and Charlie, even though Seth can do it as well. Abel mentions that the person who saved him told him to stay away from Shadow Lou. Now, here are the clips so you guys can see for yourself. The commander of a band of mercenaries was kind enough to take me in. He was like a father to me. 
but he died in an accident not too long ago. Now I have no memories and no family. But I do remember one thing. Back when he was alive, the commander always told me to stay away from something called Shadowloo. That move. How is it that you can do that? You mean my sonic boom? Do you know someone else who can do it? Who did you see? Where is he? I don't even know you. Did you expect me to spill my secrets? So there you have it guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Do you think that is Charlie and this is somehow going to play into the story and Abel being playable? Or do you think Capcom is just trolling or trying to throw everyone for a loop? Let me know in the comments. But now on to my 10th and final pick and we have a tie here. I couldn't decide. We got Corinne and Mike Hagar from Final Fight. So let's talk about both of these characters and talk about why they may or may not be included in Street Fighter V. First starting off with Corinne. Now, no doubt, Corinne is one of the most highly requested characters for Street Fighter V. From every character poll I've been seeing, sometimes she ranks at number one, two, at least in the top three. And in Japan, she is always at number one. People from Japan love Corinne and want to see her playable. So the question arises, why hasn't she been playable in any other Street Fighter games other than the Street Fighter Alpha series or Capcom Fighting Evolution? Now, the reason from what I've been hearing is, Corinne is not owned by Capcom. Supposedly, the rights for her character belong to the illustrator for the manga of Street Fighter Sakura Gambaru, which is the name of it. Now, from everything I've been reading about this whole situation, like, a lot of fans bring up the argument, well, she was in Street Fighter Alpha 3, she was in Capcom Fighting Evolution, did they own the license at that point, and did it expire? Which seems to be the logical answer. Maybe Capcom at one point had the license to her, but then it expired, or it wasn't renewed, whatever the case may be. So now, with all that being said, does this mean Corinne can never be playable in a Street Fighter game ever? And the question is no, she could be, only if Capcom is willing to pay money to the people that own the rights to her. Then they'll be able to use her. But if not, then she can't. Now it just comes to the question, will Capcom pay the money? I have no idea. Nobody knows. But Corinne is definitely a highly requested character, and you never know. If she gets enough votes and they want her in, maybe they'll consider it. But now moving on to the second character from the 10th pick with Mike Hagar. Now Mike Hagar, I would absolutely love to see in Street Fighter V. Now, it's very strange because we've seen practically every other character from the Final Fight series in a Street Fighter game. We had Cody, Guy, we just got Poison, we have Yugo, we even had Sodom, but we've never had Mike Hagar, who's pretty much like the main character of the entire series. So the question is, why is that? Is it because they want to keep him strictly for Final Fight and only have him represent the Final Fight series? Or is it just because they don't want to use Mike Hagar? Who knows? Maybe they feel he'll just be too similar to Zangief. But I think there's a lot more they could do with him to make him unique. They could take elements and inspiration from the Final Fight games. They could use like parts from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. They could use some of those moves to make a good moveset for him and mix and match. But I definitely think Mike Hagar is about due to be in a Street Fighter game. Come on, Capcom. Let him pilot drive his way in and let's see the mayor of Manhattan duke it out with Ryu in a Street Fighter game finally after all these years. So guys, that's pretty much everything for this video. That was a long video. I went through everything I wanted to do with Street Fighter V discussion and finally give you guys my top 10. I've been wanting to do this video for months now. Finally happy I got the chance to do it for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments about anything I mentioned in this video, anything you guys would like to add regarding characters on my top 10, characters you guys want to see. Remember, that's just my top 10. Let me know the characters you guys want and we'll just have to wait and see who ends up making the roster. Let me know about elements of the games you guys like or stuff you want to see. Anything you guys feel like worth mentioning let me know in the comments but like always if you guys are fighting game fans and you want the latest news and speculation on games like street fighter super smash bros mortal kombat and poker tournament make sure to subscribe to my channel also you guys can follow me on twitter the link will be in the comments and description thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon with a brand new video